Okay, this video is uh, the opening video of a series of three videos regarding the Bill of Material menu within the Blue Seer ERP application. Uh, the first video will be um, regarding the constructs of the Bill of Material for a manufactured item. And then the second and third videos will uh, build upon the constructs that we created in the, in the first video. Okay, with that said, uh, this, these series of videos are specific to version 6.0. Uh, you can see that here in the title bar. Um, these, uh, there's been a lot of enhancements since version 5.2 with regards to the bill of material with the creation of alternate bill of materials. And so uh, just to note that this, is, this video, series of videos is specific to uh, version 6.0. Okay, with that said, we're going to go and create the items for our bill of material construct. So we're going to go to the item master. You can type that into the navigational text box here as item. And we're going to create the parent item first. So this is the parent MFG item that we will, will be the, uh, the host of our bill of material. Okay, uh, you have to set the type class M as manufactured. And then you also have to choose a routing. Now we're going to choose the default routing which comes with the uh, download of Blue Seer. It's just a sample routing that has operational, fictitional operational costs of uh, labor rates, dollar, uh, burden rates, etc. Okay, then we're going to click Add, and then we're going to create the subassembly part. So this will be a subassembly that resides within the parent manufactured item that we just created. It too will be a manufactured item, and it too will have a routing. We're going to choose the same routing as the, uh, the parent. Uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Click Add. And now we're going to create two purchased items which we considered raw material items. So raw material purchased item 1. And this will be class P. And you will have to set a purchase price which will be the same as the material cost. So purchase price here of $1.33 when you tab out, you'll see that the material cost is uh, created as well. <clears throat> now note the purchase price and material cost for a purchased item is exactly the same thing. And then we'll click Add. And we're going to create one more purchased raw item. Number two. And we'll type class P. We're going to set this price to uh, $1.13. Click Add. And now we have all four items created. Now we can actually look at those items from uh, the item browse, uh, type item B in the navigational text box, click Run, and you will see the, the two manufactured items we created and the two purchase components we created. Uh, okay, now let's create the bill of material. So now we go to the bill of material program, which you can go to from inventory. BOM menu, BOM maintenance, or you can just type in BOMM in the text in the text box. Okay, one thing to note here is that the only items that will show up here in the item master, the parent items for a bill of material, is manufactured items, class items of class M. And we'll we can see that only those two items of class M will show up here. So we're going to create the bill of material for the subassembly first. All right, there is no BOM found. This is the first uh, creation of a BOM for this item. So uh, we'll click the button there. And the BOM ID for the default is typically the same as the item number. But you can change this BOM ID to whatever you, 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 you like. Okay, this is a subassembly BOM. And we're going to choose one of the raw purchase components here. Uh, let's choose this one here. At a dollar thirteen, quantity one. Click add, and you'll notice over here in the tree structure that we have this raw purchased item built up within this subassembly component at the uh, standard cost of a dollar thirteen, which is the component cost of this uh, component. Also, the purchase price of this component. Okay, we're going to clear that, and then now we're going to create the uh, bill of material for the parent. Okay, this will be the first BOM created, so we click that, parent BOM, and we're going to choose uh, this item here. 
This raw, raw purchase item here first, we're gonna put the quantity. You'll notice that the item master price for this component showed up here in the component cost. We're gonna click add. Then we're also gonna add the sub-assembly that we just created so that we have a two levels deep bill of material. Quantity one, click add. And now we have this structure with the purchase component here along with the peer of the subassembly here as well inside this operation of this parent manufactured item. Now one thing I noticed is that the uh, standard cost is zero for the subassembly we just created. So we're going to go back, we're going to clear this. This will stay committed. We're going to go back to the uh, subassembly and we're just going to roll the cost, the current cost and standard cost here. So we need a standard cost. So essentially you roll the, the uh, current cost 363 into the standard and you're done. Now let's go back to the parent manufactured item and you'll notice the standard cost is 363. Okay, and we're also gonna roll the cost for this item as well. So we now have a standard cost of 746 for this manufactured item with this bill of material structure. Now a couple of things to note, if you click on the, uh, the individual items within the uh, bill of material here, you'll notice that it goes back and pulls these variables associated with this item, the quantity per and the 1.33 to cost, uh, for, for only for the, uh, the parent part. So you'll see this changing over here as well. Also, and only for the parent part, the operations immediately underneath the, uh, the parent, you can click here and you can see the operational costs associated with that, uh, that routing. Uh, and this essentially gives the standard rates for the uh, the default routing that we uh, cr that we assigned this manufactured item to, and this is labor dollars, uh, fifteen dollars per hour for labor, setup, burden, etc. The simulation column allows you to adjust these variables just for simulation purposes. So if you notice the two fifty simulated operational cost here, if I was to change this to twelve dot thirty four and tab out, this is also changing. I can do the same for the burden. 89, and you'll see your operational cost dropping. And it's just for simulation purposes. Okay, with that said, uh, we're going to show that the item in the item master now has a, a current cost and a standard cost for this uh, bill of material of this parent item. So we go back to item. And go to cost, and you'll see the current cost of 746 and the standard cost of 746. So you have both cost structures that are essentially the uh, rolled cost of the bill of material within this, uh, this, this structure here. Okay, that concludes this, uh, this initial video. We will be going to uh, uh, do a, two additional videos that concentrate on the ledger impact from selling this manufactured item here and the cost that uh, will impact the general ledger cost of goods sold accounts. Okay, if you have any questions or uh, comments, please uh, reach out to our website at bluesear.com. Uh, that is also located right here in the about section. So you can reach out to bluesear.com or you can reach out to the project site for any, uh, for any bugs or issues. Uh, you can submit a, an issues uh, on the tracking list there. All right, thank you.